really heavy focus on the duo lanes here for both teams, actually, and then the Ari taken out. So it won't be a repeat of the last matchup between these two teams, and they're going to take that away from Pain. What we do see, though, is Malphite is still up and available, as is Elise. And I think both of those champions we've seen a little bit of. Zach would be the other one that comes to mind as well, that we've seen first picks throughout the, the course of the wildcard tournament. Yeah, there's so many options. We still have Twisted Fate up uh, and Nocturne as well, a really strong combination that Payne was also able to use. Well, we'll have to see what Dark Passage decide to go for. I have an inkling they may trend towards that Zack. It's something that we have seen them play as well. And just in terms of all of the other wildcard teams, uh, a <laughs> large number of... Rockets. Everyone does this against Brazil. It, it, it happens a lot. And uh, Naru, he played Zed yesterday. Yeah. And he had a, a, some very good picks. Yeah, so they ban out Ari and then they take Zed. So it's one of the top assassins not available, and they decided to actually take away the other one. But Pain are the ones who chose to go red side for this matchup, so they actually wanted to be second pick, so they could have two picks. That's why they left so much up on the board here, and they're not going to let Zach get through. And it's also something that allows them to counter big down at the last stage of the match as well. So they grab two of what they feel are the, the stronger champions in the pool and, and available. They lock in both that Zach and that Twitch. Not 100% certain where that Zach is going to go. And if I recall correctly, it was uh, Ven and Razor that played in the top lane. Really comboing that dive, yeah. dive, dive mentality <laughs> that we talked about in the preamble. I think everybody from Dark Passage is going to hover over Mord for a second or two. It's just a joke, Q, Q, Q. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, he usually plays tanks up in that top lane. The only reason in that last game against Lion that he played full DPS by was because it's a bit more exciting and they didn't have much to lose in that one. And it, it almost worked out a couple of times in terms of some of those uh, uh, some of those ganks, but obviously not going to be the case right now. Lulu and Jarvan locked in. Now Lulu's a champion that fell out of favor within the LCS circles, but is still very highly regarded as a, a very powerful and effective support. And she's really good against those dive teams. So if Payne's going to keep on using the same strategy here, the single target that they go on is going to have that wild growth. They'll have extra HP, and then there's also another shield that Lulu has to offer. So she's good at protecting a single target from those multi-man dives. Just because we still have two picks left, they could be pulling an immunity and run that Lulu mid Z top lane. Not expecting it, but hey, we've seen it once today already. Didn't really work out for them. They were able to extend that game for quite a long yes. time, but man, the early game and the laning phase for that Lulu were painful. It was very painful indeed. Over for Pain Gaming, they have secured their mid laner as well as their support. So that's going to be an Oriana and a Sona. And a very sort of traditional composition here coming out of Pain. A lot of uh, uh, AoE, they've got CC, they've got damage, they've got follow up, and it seems to be a pretty well rounded composition. So yeah, far. much more, you know, team fight oriented here from Pain, whereas we additionally had a Kale lock-in for Dark Passage, so not only can they protect their single target with Lulu's ultimate, but they also have the intervention, which will make whoever is deep immune, and that's probably going to be Zed. The one drawback of Zed, you know, he's an amazing assassin, and he can go all in very well and take out almost any target, but then he can be focused down very quickly. Now, Dark Passage have two options to keep that Zed alive, no matter how deep he goes. Now, we did see a top lane Kale yesterday, and I'm trying to strack, <laughs> rack my brain if it was Fab Fab or not, but uh, top lane Kale yesterday, and it wrecked face. It absolutely destroyed people. And, you know, if given time to, to get towards that Nash's Tooth and Death Cap and Leandries, as we seen yesterday, that's a whole lot of damage that can come down, and it's sustained because it's multiple auto attacks. Yeah, they're going with a multi-threat uh, composition over there on Dark Passage, but we did did finally have the lock-in for uh, for Pain. They are going with that double tank. It's going to be Zack in the jungle and Malphite up top. So they still will have the potential to dive straight onto that AD carry, get his attack speed slowed down, and a nice chunk of burst damage. So one of the things we can sort of you know highlight from yesterday, some of the dives were not always effective. Sometimes <laughs> the AD carries got away, so they just went right. Let's not take Malphite and Nocturne this time. Let's take Malphite and Zack, and if the first bounce misses, we'll just keep bouncing until we eventually get whoever we're aiming at. Right, so they've got Elastic Slingshot. If that one does hit, then it's going to be a very easy Unstoppable Force to land, and if it misses, then they'll have to wait for the Flash to come out, and you can get him there. Well, we'll have to see how well Dark Passage can handle this all-in pressure that's going to be coming down from the members of Pain, because not only do you have to deal with those knockups, you've got an Oriana in the background, so if you do get caught, you're going to get pulled together, and it's just... if. 
Dog Passage group up, I think they're in trouble. Yeah, so we saw the very effective Zack and Orion combination used against Lion Gaming. And you had your, your line of Sia because Zack, all he took for, for Zack to kill him was one slingshot into the Shockwave Dissonance. And Caitlyn was disappeared. Dead AD carry. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the games. We are about to kick off the second semi-final of the International Wildcard Tournament between Dark Passage of Turkey taking on Pain Gaming of Brazil. The winner of this gets to face off against Lithuania tomorrow in the grand finals. That is going to be against Gaming Gear. We can see that uh, we are loading into the game. Just a couple seconds left. No last minute switches. We're going to see a teleport on Malphite again. So, not only is the presence of that team fight power there, it's a global that I think uh, 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 Dark Passage is going to have to find a way to deal with during the laning phase. Now, the thing that always bugs me about having that teleport Malphite come from the top lane is that if you don't get the mastery to reduce the time on teleport, it's four seconds. And even if you do, it's still three and a half seconds before your main tank arrives at the battle. You usually want to have Malphite starting out the fight by ulting in onto the AD carry. So it really takes some adjustments to get used to playing a team fight where your tank is actually coming in three seconds later then all the action is starting. Yeah, and we can always see some of those fights fizzling out sometimes. If, yeah. You know, by the time the teleport lands, everyone from, you know, Dark Passage may have scattered and just peeled away and they're no longer in threat and getting knocked up. What we do see, though, from Dark Passage is uh, multiple sustained damage threats down the line. So if they get ahead early, they may be in a good position if they get to that mid-game roaming phase. And we'll have to see if they do force a fight at the first Dragon too. As soon as Malphite's level 6, they can take advantage of that teleport. It's very easy to use the first teleport down at that Dragon because of the extra armor that turrets have right now, hard to answer um, a Dragon for a top turret objective. Well, we'll be jumping into this match very, very shortly. And of course, this will be the last best of three for the day before we return tomorrow. Some awesome crowd shots. and. Gamescom is ridiculously packed on the very first day. I believe there's still tickets available, so if you guys do want to grab them and head down, make sure you do. So we are into game. On the blue side, Dark Passage for one last time, and on the red side, Pain Gaming. No super exciting itemization out the gate. Everybody's sitting on the regular Dorans and pots. However, Naru with the Doran shield, maybe considering some lane swaps? Very interesting start for Zed. Usually, usually we'll see them go very offensive and start with the red elixir for that extra kick when they go all in. But with the Dorian shield, he may be looking at a two versus one lane swap. Well, we'll have to see how Dark Passage decides to play this one out. For the time being, it is Pain Gaming that have stacked themselves up. They definitely want to get some vision down. And you can see that Sir T was hanging out on the right-hand side. Now, Doran Shield is also very strong at laning against Orianna. Wow, we do have the last six inside engage. So, Sir T gets a bit of a knock up there. Halo of Arrows comes down. It's going to be enough of a slow to dissuade any further engagement. Pain Gaming managed to get a ward down on the red buff and no summoner spells blown, which is the crucial thing about this early trade. No summoner spells blown, and now Sir T has started with Elastic Slingshot. It's not the best level one for Zack in the jungle. So he's going to need help, a lot of help on that first buff to get him to level two so he can get his W, which is what he really uses to clear out the jungle. As it stands, he's moving towards his red buff area. Xpion is chilling with him. We're going to be moving to try and help him out and support. We do see that uh, Venon is actually down at the blue buff area, and it actually looks to be uh, Pain Gaming that have done a duo lane swap. And we've got some lane shenanigans going all over the place. Uh, it does look like Kale's going bottom. So it actually is going to be top laners in the bottom lane and dual laners in the top lane, a straight up head-to-head. -head. Looks like Pain did want the two versus two situation here. And with both junglers starting at their blue, there won't be any of those late invades that are aided by the support and AD carry lanes here. And it seems like the junglers are going to be fine and left to their own devices. Well, and you see how quickly Surti can recover from starting off with a slightly less than optimal uh, ability. This top in the top lane, Letelion, takes a lot of damage from that early expunge of BRTT and combo that with a power cord from Stoner, and he's instantly down to you know a third HP with no sustain outside of those potions and a little bit uh, of lifesteal. This is one of the reasons why Twitch is so heavily fought over in the North American scene 
Um, Cloud9 support elimination has said that actually if you take Twitch, you shouldn't lose any two versus two lane. And so that sort of explains why Pain wanted to get the swap up here and stay in this two versus two situation. You can see them already taking advantage of it, going very aggressive and shoving the minion wave into turrets, hoping that they can make uh, Varus miss some last hits here. Well, he's already a couple behind. That's five at this point in time, as we do see it's not over. The RTT's gonna land those auto attacks. Expunge is available. Oh! The poison's ticking. Barrier gets popped. And the shield comes down from Lulu to save Atelion, but Barrier burned. Barrier and heal burn there. So both panic summoners uh, for Dark Passage, and they're still so low that he's gonna have to recall very soon or get dove. So there's gonna be experience lost. There's gonna be gold lost. Summoner spells are gone as well. We do see that Riosta is trying to come up here to aid his duo laners out. And we do see Sir T in the mid lane, charges up the slingshot, does get the knock up onto Naru. Command attack as well as distances, slowing him down with a red buff slow. Naru continues to get dropped down to 250 HP, but gets away with his life. He did get enough harass though, because Naru started with the Doran shield. That means he only had one health potion, and now he's going to be sitting at half health for a long time until he decides to recall. Is This will actually indirectly make him lose out on some CS because he can't play as far forward in the lane now. Well, we'll have to see how far ahead Pain Gang even can make that CS Ooh, lead. Is. Sneaky Jarvan move over into the bush. Red buff is on, gets the slowdown on XP on this. A little bit of a delayed response here from Italian and Holy Spark. A good slow coming out of BRTT, followed by the flash. Means they get away, but summon a spell burned. And if Riosta can, you know, loop around, that's going to be a, a rat that they can catch in a trap. And it was a little bit of mistiming there on that gank. Varus did miss out a lot during the chase. Here's the flash in. Oh, we do see in the top lane, Riosta continues to come back. We talked about this. The red buff slow is there. Now BRTT's dropped to oh. 110 HP. A flash forward. The heal keeps him up. Now Letelio takes the tower hits. They're going to trade one for one. It's Lulu that picks up first blood with Expion managing to secure the counter kill thanks to the aid of the tower. And Expion's not over as here comes Kami. It does look like Riosta should be able to get away. Flag and drag to safety. They did get the first blood, but it was a traded kill without jungler support here. Meanwhile, Zach has gone bottom to help out that Malphite lane, and he's going to be able to uh, hold down Kale. And we'll have to see how well Kale can handle himself. 24 CS at this point in time. He does have an advantage over his direct opposite number through his Venom. He's currently sitting on 17. And for the time being, a little bit of jungle interruption. Fab Fab gets the slowdown. It's a little bit of splash damage on a Surti, but thanks to Cell Division, Surti should be able to heal that one back up and return to the jungle relatively cleanly. And even with that kill top, since it went to Lulu and not Varus, Dark Passage is still going to be in trouble in that top lane, and they will need repeat attention from Jarvan if they actually want to get the upper hand. Because we have a huge minion wave lead here for BRTT, and the minion wave is also pushed to their turret. So Dark Passes are going to have to overextend, and it's going to put them in a compromising position. You can see they don't even want to go to lane. Yeah, at this point in time, Natalion is forced to farm the Wolf Camp. He's only sitting on 12 CS before securing those three, and his opponent, BRTT, uh, just breaching 40 creeps. And that all stems from that level 2 expunge damage that came down with no sustain in that lane. Natalion and Holy Path have just been pushed further and further backwards. Now this mid lane, we did see a little bit of attention, but Naru, he's holding pretty well considering how low he went earlier. Yeah, and he's, he's just been last hitting there with the abilities because, because of that early Zac gank and the fact that he did go with a Doran shield. Man, he's not going to go very aggressive early. We'll wait until he goes back for his first buy probably before we see his first death mark go off. Yeah, we haven't seen too many... Uh, too many items picked up just yet. Let's see, has got himself that second Doran's Blade, BRTT or the Vamp Scepter. Double Doran's Rings in the back pocket of Fab Fab, so got a little bit of HP and mana regen. And you see Naro now with a little bit of aid from Riosta, they may try to jump on him. And speaking of the of Fab Fab down there, yes, he is beating Malphite, but you know, 10 CS, you should be punishing whoever takes teleport in any lane. And he is doing that, but we always have to remember that the Malphite counter gank is available in any of the other lanes that they do pressure. So Jarvan's going to have to pick and choose his gank path. 
very carefully as he goes goes close to the steal there, but not quite in time. Yeah, we both held our breath as we thought he might jump in. In the top lane, VRTT forces Holy Thoth out with a couple of auto attacks and then expunge damage to drop both of them to about 50%. XPN's got a nearly full mana bar, and that's another summoner heal used already. Holy Thoth. Yeah, you said they don't have any sustain. Wow. Well, okay. <laughs> that's, that's burst heal. I wouldn't necessarily class that, but, uh, you know, questionable timing. Maybe they feared a bit of an all-in from VRTT. He's, he's pretty much been using it on cooldown just because they do need as much health as they can they can get. Well, we'll see if it works out for them because for the time being, Celion is still 30 CS behind VRTT. And that's the real, the real story of this lane. If the Twitch is currently sitting on only about 500 gold more, but that'll definitely start adding up him a little closer to his items. Yeah, well, this is the reason why Pain are actually still almost even in gold here. If it wasn't for BRTT, they would be losing pretty heavily because, like we said, Malphite down bottom is uh, behind in CS. And Sir T, the jungle Zac, is also just a handful of creeps behind that of Riosta. However, he has tried to make a couple of uh, ganks happen. Venom cast gets thrown out, slows the on down there, wait for the shield to wear off, and then use Expunge. Nice patient play there from. Now, Malphan has also just used his teleport to get back to lane, so we no longer have the threat uh, in the any of the other lanes. And it's up to Dark Passage to time the cooldown of that very important summer spell. When I think back to yesterday's performances on Venom, he also fell behind in CS, but was still impactful in team fights because of the playstyle of Pain. He was just at a jump on the target, and the rest of the team would collapse upon them. So we'll see if that works out for them in the time being. And the target that he's going to be jumping on is probably this weak Varus up here, who's already being starved a little bit, so he's very far behind on CS, and it's going to be an easy target for that unstoppable force. Well, we'll have to see if he can manage to make it in range. There's a fair amount of protection that can come down from uh, Pain Gaming to aid him in that response. Come on, attack down in the dissonance and get Ben and his movement speed up. Now in the bottom lane, Surti's hanging out in this tri bush. You can see Riosta was thinking about coming down, but went mid instead. So the reason this game is going so slow is because the junglers are going to the lanes that are losing. And we do see the land knocks Fab Fab up into the air. Let's bounce gets thrown down after the uh, survivability comes out. Fab oh! Fab manages to survive a flash forward from Sir T. Lands the last auto attack. And at the end of the day, a little sloppy at the end, but a fairly safe and easy gank. So Fab Fab, you know, part of the reason that he was ahead in CS is because he keeps on shoving up very far. And if you shove up that far against Zack, he can come in for an elastic slingshot. He manages to jump back onto Riosta. Just gets a little bit of, uh, of poke damage down, really. Trying to dissuade him from picking any fights. He's a, uh, Venom, of course, has burned that unstoppable force. So they're not really looking to kill off Riosta here. Just push the lane down, try to deny Fab Fab of any experience in gold. All right, this is a very tense moment here. 100 CS on Zed, and he finally goes back to buy. He picks up a ton of burst damage. Brutalizer plus that Cutlass. Yes, it's not a Blade of the Ruined King, but the active on that will also be doubled, just like the Blade of the Ruined King one will be for his first death mark. So he is now looking for blood. And we'll see if he can manage to make it to Twitch, who is particularly squishy right now. Pain Gaming have started off the Dragon. They've got a numbers advantage in the pit, but there's no teleport available. Riosta could decide to drag himself into this pit. Dragon at 1,500 HP. It's getting within smite range, manages to get secured. Crescendo locks up two members of Dark Passage in Pain with a Dragon and a double kill back to back. Such a dangerous face check there with the amount of control that Pain have. Just saw the effectiveness of the Shockwave into the Crescendo. Just lining them both up right there. Perfect play from Pain. And not only do they take the main objective, but now they also have a free time at this bottom turret. So they've managed to secure the top tower a couple minutes earlier. They've taken the Dragon 10 seconds ago, and now they're on this bottom tower as well. They're going to extend this global gold lead even further. And you know, we think about how powerful that shockwave into Crescendo was. Add an unstoppable force, a slingshot, and a let's Yeah, bounce. that was only a little taste of yes. what you're going to get. Late that was game. Like two out of six potential AOE team lockup abilities. And, you know, Dark Passage, I guess if they don't, if they don't play that spaced out team fight perfectly, they could be in trouble. Well, th that was also um, a, just went to show how important Vision is going to be for this Dark Passage team. They were going into that blind because of the nice pink ward there from Pain clearing out the Dragon Pit. 
you can't be walking into a situation like that. And if they do that around Baron Pit, it will cost them very heavily late game. Oh, holy thought throws down the wild goat slingshot. Oh, yeah. Shot. Knock up from Unstoppable. Knock up from the slingshot. And then let's bounce. Throws him into the air. Somebody give Dark Passage wings because they are flying across the map. Lulu's going to need wings because she's going to have to jump a wall to get out of this one. She does have the flash. Does manage to flash away, but here comes Sir T. It's the uh, elastic stretch is going to slow him down. Nara's thinking about jumping involved. And now that Riosta's joined, this is going to be a three versus three. However, Lulu's incredibly low. Deathmark is going to be able to just pop Kami where he stands. And Naru is going to give his life up, managing to get one kill. And the red buff manages to get transferred there to BRTT at the end of the day. Advantage playing gaming. He was a uh, Nara was able to assassinate his target, and we we're talking about him looking for blood. He was able to get it, but after that, he should have been aware that he was going to die no matter what. Decided to flash anyway, and so now he actually is down two cooldowns where he could have just been out one. Well, very importantly, during the course of that last buyback for uh, Kami, he's managed to pick himself up. That's on your Zaldas. BRTT gets jumped on by Riosta, but. No cataclysm available yet, so he's not in danger of being locked into any terrain or being jumped on. Yeah, the cataclysm using that last fight to try and protect the Lulu. Save her, get her out alive. Mission was successful, so cooldown well used. Well, Pain Gaming is sitting 4,000 gold ahead of Dark Passage right now. They seem to be picking superior engagements and turning those into objectives. That's really what counts. Two towers and to the advantage as well as that dragon. They haven't really turned their focus to this mid lane just yet. However, you have to feel it's not too far in the future for them to start grouping up because their, their comp is just so well suited to these big engagements. Yeah, Pain Game are very happy with how the early game has gone. They haven't really even had to, gone lo to go, lo go looking <laughs> for the engagements. They've sort of just come to them. And the one thing that uh, Pain Gaming, you know, it, it really does stand out for me yesterday. The, the later the game went, the more difficult it was for Bane Gaming to have those clear wins and those clear-cut kill objective wham bam thank you ma'am kind of plays. And of course, if Dark Passage are given time to get to a position where that intervention of Kale can be effective, it's gonna work out. BRTT picks a fight 1v2 before Exprion joins. Spray and play is down. That's a long range spray and play. Wild Goat comes out. Chain of Corruption may be enough. Not until the Unstoppable Force lands. That's gonna be the first kill of this fight for Pain Gaming, and they turn their attention to Holy Thoth. There's no one to save him this time around, and he does give up his life. Ooh, the Invisible Twitch coming in for an assassination. One of the few AD carries that can pull a move like that off. And then the teleport was used again. So that was actually a big weapon for Pain Gaming. But they got exactly what they wanted. And they're going to need to shove in at least two lanes right now to deal with uh, Fat Fabulous pressure down bottom. Well, at the very least, they get that single tower for Dark Passage. And I'll have to try string together a few more to start clawing back this gold difference. I do want to highlight the item build that Venon's working on right now. Sorcerer shoes into a haunting guise. We'll see where it progresses from here, but that's a lot of ability power and, and penetration already. So what Pain do is they pick very CC-oriented champions, but then they build all their champions with damage. So it may look initially like the team composition doesn't have a lot of damage in it, but since those are the types of items they build on the champions regardless, uh, they do end up always having the punch that they need in the end game. It's just usually the jungler that's coming through as the main tank. Well, talking about the jungler, Riosta is now trying to find himself a rat. However, BRTT backs away at precisely the right second. We felt that something was up, we felt people were around him. Now, after all of that early game dominance in that duo lane, Natalion has actually pulled back the numbers. He's now at 110 CS. He's only seven behind that of BRTT, and that's predominantly due to BRTT's significant amount of roam. So he has clawed his way back into the game, but really the main threat for Dark Passage is going to be the mid laner, Naru. He is the only one that has really high kill potential right now. So that's pretty much what Pain Gaming are going to be watching out for. Well, we'll have to see how well he can handle us with two of the outer towers down. Dark Passage have not needed to defend an onslaught from Pain for a little while. Basically been able to just sit back in the lane and farm up. And Venom continues to fall further behind. Fab Fab, even though he's got two deaths to his name, he is 60 CS behind, which is a very, very high amount at the 17 minute mark. Oh, ahead. He's ahead. Ahead, sorry. Yes. Ahead. <laughs> yeah, he's done, a, he's done a very good <laughs> job at shoving that lane in and making Malphite lose out on CS. But again, because he brought the teleport, 
that's where Malphite's made up for it, and he's been making plays across the map. And this is exactly what Payne have been doing all weekend long. Timing the Dragon, going back to force another objective. Well, we do see Riosta is around. The last time that Dark Pass has tried to challenge for this one, it did not work out for them. The flag is about to tie him up. You know, Tomasian stand is not going to be available. Throws it in, Ooh. drags it, does have a flash available. He'll probably decide to jump out of here at some point in the not too distant future. Does manage to get away and unfortunately no steal. They have Varus up top too, so at least they are going to get that top turret down and get a little bit of gold back here. It's definitely something that we do. We actually see fairly often in the LCS is those trades for Dragon for top towers. That's going to be the second tower of the game for Dark Passage. And finally, Payne have stacked up the numbers. They've got a five man in this mid lane. They jumped onto the mid outer turret, and that's going to get just melted under the weight of all five members. And Dark Passage simply not able to, to contest that. Varus continues to split push, though. So his CS is climbing back up there, and they're getting a bit more power on him. But. Pain are continually taking objectives. That was another tower down for them, so more global gold. And the threat that Naru has is slowly dwindling because he's not going to be able to use that on Zac for much longer. He definitely doesn't want to go on to Malphite. And now Kami has rushed that Zanya's Hourglass, so he's got a really good answer for the Zed all in. It's really just going to have to be BRTT watching himself and making sure that he's next to Sona. So when Zed does come in, They'll have an answer. Well, we do see BRTT's been jumped on. Slow comes down from Fab Fab. The splash damage is out. Stealth, is it going to be enough? Does manage to get away. The auto attack's just not quick enough to be able to interrupt that stealth for longer. That 162 CS, not quite enough to squash a Twitch. To be fair, there isn't the, the largest amount of ability power on Fab Fab. If or when he starts stacking up some more, that splash damage and burst potential is going to grow even higher. And I think he just insta board Sorcerer's Shoes as well. So that's definitely going to play into his favor. Yeah, he got some nice flat penetration that works really well with the passive of Kale, which gives you the percentage penetration. So that's a, a, a nice build right there. And people are pretty much divided among going Death Cap and Lich Bane on kill or going with atta this attack speed build. That's the difference between the sustained damage or the burst. Well, we'll have to see what uh, he decides to itemize next. His Naru is now split pushing, and this is something that we see out of basically every single Zed we see at this level of play. At some point in the mid game, they tend to just pick a side lane and start Ooh. shoving it out. It looks like Kami's trying to bait in the, the death mark here because they have Twitch waiting in the wings. If they can get the death mark out of Zed, that means that PRTT will have the confidence to get into auto attack range and come finish them off. Well, and, uh, Naru manages to avoid the bait, manages to sense what is up, and he backs away. However, he has continued the split push. He is now on that top inner tower as the rest of Pain Gaming are focused around this bottom half of the map. Blue buff is secured for Kami's Orianna. And we see BRTT picking a fight with Fab Fab. The knockup comes in place. Intervention does not interrupt. Crowd control forced a flash. Immediately flashback from Sir T. And you actually see that Fab Fab stops realizing he's given up the ghost and gets taken out. Speaking of bait right there, Twitch yet just pulled off that one with Fab Fab pushing all the way up deep into pain territory without any words for himself. So that was, he has nobody else to blame but himself for that one. A little bit overconfident maybe. Very nice CS lead to 0 and 3. We do see the slingshot is being charged. Zach comes jumping in, doesn't catch anybody. We do see the shockwave pulls Holy Thought backwards and the teleports coming down from Venom. He gets a brilliant unstoppable force, knocking up the dual lane of Dark Passage as they turn their focus onto Holy Thought. Once again, he manages to escape for how long though? And Sir T goes very deep, diving past the tower. The rest of Pain Gaming is now sticking onto that mid inner turret while you can see Naru split pushing top. So Naru's gonna keep split pushing top, but Pain are gonna go for the inhibitor turret here. And they just showed how important positioning is against this heavy. BCC team, if you're a little bit out and Payne know that they have the man advantage, they won't hesitate to throw every cooldown they have at you. Doesn't matter that Crescendo and Un Unstoppable Force overlapped, that was plenty to kill Varus. Not over yet, as you can see the mid inner turret, uh, inhibitor turret is now down. Four members of Payne Gaming are going to secure the first inhibitor of the game. BRTT was forced away from Fab Fab, and now that Fab Fab has joined the fight, DP may decide to pick a battle here. The top lane, let's have a look, look at that, as you can see Naru is bashing away on the inhibitor. Here comes BRTT, there is a death mark available for Nari. He may jump on him. We'll have to see how quickly they can go Let's down. That duel. The recoil is coming in from the rest of Pain Gaming as Nari. The death mark is up, is gonna pop, and BRTT with the help of Barrier and all of the damage actually kills off Nari. 
So he can survive the all-in there. But that was because, you're right, he had the cooldowns. Barrier plus the active from Blade of the Rune King healing him before the ignite uh, was on him meant everything to his life. Yeah, definitely worked out in favor of BRTT and the rest of Pain Gaming. The inhibitor is standing, although it is exposed. You cannot discount that fact. So, Naru was able to get two towers in that push. However, Dark Passage have lost in mid tower and their mid inhibitor. And Dark Passage, that was a really good play by them. And regardless, they were trying to buy time for Zed to answer. If they can answer anything even with Pain at this point, then it's a win for them. Uh, it was just Fab Fabulous couldn't quite keep the rest of Pain there from recalling. And BRTT could actually handle it by himself. Yeah, we actually seen that Fab Fab won the duel against BRTT, forced him out of lane, actually blew his flash in that engagement, and then BRTT picked a one-on-one -on -one with Naru, which he managed to win. So maybe, maybe, if Fab Fab's able to try and help deal with BRTT, that could be the answer in his team fight. Well, look at the map from the point of view of Dark Passage. They have no wards anywhere near pain side and they only have two in their own jungle on the other side of the coin pain gaming have littered this blue buff side of the map with a ton of wards seeing shots being charged he decides to cancel that one up unstoppable force and let's bounce available pain gaming making it clear that they are thinking about baron and they're actually looking like they're going to start this one off potentially baiting it that's their entire game plan, is they like catching people out of position. That's where they get to use all of this CC that they bring to the table and that they love so much. Well, all of Dog Passage are completely split up right now. Darwin and Kale in the mid lane, Zed and Varus, sitting by the blue buff area. You can see the moment they step into vision. Oh, Pain Jarvan deep in enemy territory away. to check this Baron, though. And he's just to get a ward down, which is very crucial because nobody from Pain is aware of a slingshot goes out. They managed to catch out Holy Thoth. A wild Ghost gets used, and no ultimates from Pain Gaming has been used yet. So that was a, a nice and easy pickup for them. Yeah, that's terrible news for Dark Passage right now. Everything being available for Pain means they have nothing to worry about right now. And the best Dark Passage can hope for is a base race and just try and trade as many objectives as possible evenly. While the mid lane is definitely the shorter lane, the first tower to fall is in favor of Dark Passage. They're now on the inner turret. However, Pain Gaming have made it to the inhibitor turret. There are minions finally moving in, so that armor is going to drop down. Dark Passage have committed themselves to this base race, but it's five members versus four. Alulu has just respawned. Inhibitor has finally dropped down in favor of Pain Gaming. They've managed to get two down. They're now onto the Nexus turret, and all of Dark Passage are recalling. This is going to get exploded. They need home guard boots to finish this one. Fab Fab's going to come run in immediately gets the slowdown and Pain Gaming have backed away at the right time. But the base race, fully in favor of the Brazilians. Yeah, Dark Passes weren't able to answer evenly right there. They were only missing Lulu, so they thought that they could trade as many turrets as Pain was going for, but Pain were ready to all in this. It was a game of chicken, and Pain were not going to pull out. Yeah, and Pain had the numbers advantage here as well, managing to take, you know, multiple towers on his inner turrets already. And now thanks to that immense vision circle and jump onto the barrel. They're going to pick this one up completely uncontested. Holy Thoth is clearing out some wards as he moves towards the pit. He's going to get there way too late. Is Naru doing the best he can to get back up there and try to take down one of these inhibitors? He's not even going to be able to get to the inhibitor, though. The super minion is too strong for him. As BRTT comes in again for a second round, and this is a half health set. Uh, the ambush is down. There's the crescendo we were talking about. Barrier comes up, manages to survive the death mark. I think without Barrier, that would have dead, been a dead BRTT. Unstoppable force throws Fab Fab up in the air. There's a member of Dark Passage with wings. With no knockups just yet, as Sir TT throws down the ledge bounce. He continues to chase around. He picks up a kill down onto uh, the Kale of Fab Fab and they carry on chasing and Pain Gaming, they have an answer to everything Dark Passage that it has to say. They finally were able to dunk BRTT though, so a uh, moral victory for Dark Passage, but a Baron up Pain Gaming coming down. The only thing is they don't have any of their ultimates, so Pain are missing a lot of their what their composition is built around. Well, there is a, lo a very short death time as we are only 26 minutes into the game. Pain Gaming with a 15 kills to 3 advantage is now onto the last standing Nexus turret, but they're, without their AD carry, they're a little less committed to sticking to this fight. And they do decide to back away. Just focusing on the inhibitor instead, you can see BRTT alive with the Quicksilver Sash as well. That's going to help him out. At least getting rid of that death mark as and when it comes down. They know that they can't overextend at this point because of the fact that their ultis are down. If those were up, they'd be fine with going in and uh, getting a little bit more damage. But 
They're gonna have to wait for BRTT to return. Take your time and don't throw the game. Well, Pain Gaming now move back on to the Dragon. Serti is alone in starting this one off. Gonna get a little bit of support now from Venon and the rest of the team. And with two inhibitors down, Super Minions in the top and the middle lane. With Baron roughly halfway done, I think they've had very successful use of that Baron thus far. Their focus has to be the bottom lane. Their focus has to be that final inhibitor and waiting for the Super Minions to make Dark Passage's life even more painful. Yeah, and they've just decimated the Dark Passage uh, base over here. But the thing is, Dark Passage have been able to at least get their vision back on the road to Baron. So the next one, they may have a chance of actually dealing with this pain game. The only thing is, if you funnel in to Baron through either of those jungle pathways, then you're just grouping yourself up for all of this crowd control that Pain are bringing. Well, we'll have to see how well Xpion can clear out these wards. He's had that Oracle's Elix on for a prolonged period of time. He's been chugging them every single time they're going down. When your team's got nine towers, multiple dragons, a Baron, you can afford to stick, keep those Oracle's Elixirs up. And as we were talking about, with the teleport available, Venon's dealing with a split push, and the rest of Pain Gaming have stacked up in this bottom half of the map. And they're sending their... DPS heavy Malphite, you know, he's got a lot of spell penetration in the Sunfire Cave to deal with this Zed, and it seems like he does have enough to handle Zed in the split push, which means that that's basically Dark Passage's only other option. It's kind of off the table now, because Malphite can handle Zed, and Malphite has teleport to be able to join the rest of the team. And that ward that just got put down by Exxon could pay dividends as teleport is coming directly to it. Kami does force to use that. Sonya's outlaw stays alive. Rios is the first victim of the fight. They have jumped down onto him. You do see the crescendo locking up both Naru as well as Rios. And now they carry on chasing. Italian is the next focus of the target. Intervention comes down, managing to save Varus, but only for a brief second as he gets slowed by everybody's Q. That's Pain Gaming securing four kills back to back to back, completely without reply. They pick up the third inhibitor of the game. There's only one Nexus turret standing. And with Super Minions bashing away, Pain Gaming pick up a convincing victory in the first game of the series. Yeah, that was really Dark Passage's only move right there. They had to try and take advantage of the 3.5 seconds that it takes for Malphite to teleport down. Hope to just all in and go for that 5 versus 4 situation, but Pain really too far out ahead at that point, able to take it home. Yeah, and we talked about how impactful that teleport was going to be waiting for that time frame, and Pain played it perfectly. The moment that they got jumped on, the Zonya Zaldros went down, they jumped into that one, and, and truthfully, Pain didn't really make many mistakes. They, they picked the right fights, they pushed the right towers, and it's hard to see what you would do if you were Dark Passage to overcome Pain Gaming. Well, they've been getting behind early against this very AoE heavy composition that Pain likes to run. And that's really something that they're going to have to shore up in the next game. Because if they do that early, then it just means Pain take every single objective on the map and they stay ahead of gold until the end where they're free to dive. So early game, if that's going to be a focus for Dark Passage, would you consider different picks and bans, maybe towards an earlier or a mid-game focus of power? I mean, they had Jarvan and they had Zed. They had a pretty good kick there in the mid, in the mid game. It was just some laning mistakes that really cost them, and you have to shore up the mistakes. Yeah, and definitely something that you have to highlight is that duo lane. You know, BRTT and Flopain just completely, completely squashing the duo of Dark Passage from the very early game. And, you know, Varus never really recovered. We didn't see him having an impact in the game at all, unfortunately. Nobody really from Dark Passage recovered in that game, actually. But you, it's right, you're going to have to think about what would you consider changing in the picks and bans here for Dark Passage? Do you actually ban out the Twitch? Because they used two bans on the dual lane already yeah. in the last... Uh, in the last pick band phase. Yeah, it's something that you, you've got to evaluate. We'll have to see why Dark Pass...